people are getting back to work and things are trying to get back to normal after this crisis, uh, if we do not get support from the provincial and federal government, there will not be a, a, a transit system to be able to, to support people in, uh, in that work. Uh, this week, uh, both the Transit Board and the Mayor's Council will be hosting, uh, holding a, an emergency meeting to talk at various, uh, various measures about what we have to do if we do not get federal or provincial support. Uh, I do need to, to be up front with the residents of, of Metro Vancouver. The, uh, the changes that are, are going to have to be contemplated are going to be significant. Our transit system in the region will not be recognizable a month or two from now unless we are able to, uh, to, to, to get support. Uh, these are going to be dramatic changes that are going to affect all aspects of our transit system and there will be some elements of our transit system that will no longer exist. We know this is going to hurt people, particularly uh, vulnerable, vulnerable and low income people. Somebody who relies on transit quite frequently myself, I agree that these are incredibly, incredibly important services for people across Metro Vancouver and throughout the province. And that's why since March, our government has been working with TransLink, BC Transit and BC Ferries to ensure that these services continue to run safely and efficiently for the people of British Columbia. Here in Metro Vancouver, TransLink serves 2.5 million people and while COVID-19 has definitely changed a lot about the way that we live our lives and certainly about the way that we travel, people across the region continue to rely on these services every single day. And in fact, the pandemic has shone a bright light on just how critical these services are. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, through its Safe Operating Action Plan, TransLink stepped up its cleaning processes, made changes at stations and on vehicles to help with physical distancing, and implemented a mandatory mask policy to ensure that everybody who could wear a mask does so. And with, the, with all of the pressures, challenges, and changes, safety and service for people has always come first. Early on, our government identified transit as an essential service. We recognize transit as critical to communities and as vital to restarting our economy. But service reductions and revenue loss was a challenge. And that's why in March, we immediately went to work with TransLink to assess the impact of COVID-19 on their operations and to see how we could help. Our government also strongly advocated on behalf of British Columbians for federal support to maintain transit services for all of the people in this province. And I want very much to thank our federal partners for acknowledging BC's need for transit support during this crisis. I am very, very grateful for the 50-50 cost-sharing agreement in place today that ensures our transit agencies can continue to serve people across the province. The $644 million investment will mean people will continue to have reliable, efficient and affordable services well into the future and it will help support our economic recovery. We are also mindful, however, that there is still a long road ahead of us. And moving forward, it will continue to take a collective, concerted effort to continue to strengthen the economy and ensure services provided by TransLink and other transit systems are maintained. And our government is committed to putting in the hard work so that we emerge from these unprecedented times a stronger, healthier and more resilient British Columbia. TransLink and our government are true partners in restarting the economy and keeping services going. After all, we are in this together and together we will keep British Columbians moving. I would now